Well, hello everybody and welcome to Vinyl Treasures. I'm your host, Johnny G, John Galindo, coming to you live each and every Saturday only here on Top Shelf. Always want to welcome you to the May 26, 2018 Vinyl Treasure Show. It's the last Saturday of the month and it's all 1960s 45s out of my collection. Got a few from 1963 through 1969, so if you like the 1960s, you got to stay tuned for the next two hours. And I want to thank Hi-Fi Tim for airing my art archive show an anniversary show last weekend uh from uh, 2008 september 2008 and uh, i was not in good shape uh, last week unfortunately there was no way i can do the show probably should have been in the hospital but uh, anyway i'm here and i am on the mend not quite 100 percent, but will be 100 percent by work day really have to thank my director lynn for allowing me to work from home the last three days of the week so that worked out well so uh enough of my babble here we opened up tonight's show with a b-side from february 1966 it's by the duo john stewart and scott engel it was on the tower label a song called greens now the a-side's a vocal but to this duo duo previously members of the dalton brothers on marte scott engel he joined the walker brothers and became scott walker and were having hits by february 1966 so with the releases of those walker brothers having hits tower records decided to capitalize on that on the 45 they mentioned that um that uh, these are uh, John Stewart and Scott Engel, the uh, now members of the Walker Brothers. Of course, that was not true. Only one of the members were. That was Scott Engel. He was a member of the Walker Brothers. But anyway, that was from February 66, a song entitled Greens on the Tower label. J uh, John Stewart and Scott Engel, John G, <laughs> trying to get back into the swing. Got a lot of 45s on the Tower label for, t for tonight, so stick around for that. Well, let's start it off with the vocal portion here, and and uh, has anyone ever visited a discotheque in Manhattan called the Cheetah? And I'm asking because it's the topic of my opening vocal. Now, the club opened in May uh, 28th of 1966. It closed sometime in the 70s. It was located at 53rd and Broadway. And it could hold about 2,000 people and offered not only dancing, but a library, a movie room, and a color TV. And this group from Brooklyn, New York, did a song about it as we go to Morris Levy's Roulette Records. This one from June 66. Give a listen to the tip tops on Roulette. The name of the tune is called Mecha at the Cheetah. Come on in, reach at the Cheetah. Come on in, reach at the Cheetah. Say, come on in, reach at the Cheetah. Hey, come on in, reach at the Cheetah. There you 
go. Those are the t- the tip tops. The tip tops there from June 1966. Meet you at the Cheetah is the name of the tune. It's on uh, Morris Levy's Roulette record labels. Anyone ever gone to the Cheetah back in the in the mid 1960s? I never did. I was much too young to go to the Cheetah. And uh, anyway, I should have wish I was there though. But uh, their, this group's first release came out on the Cap label in late '65. You might know it a tune called Rama Lama, kind of like a doo-wop thing done in 65. But uh, the those are the tip tops from June of 66 as we continue here. Pulled a few flip sides. I think about 11 or 12 flip sides from the last 60s show. And here's our first by this artist. Goes by the name of Bobby Paris. His real name is Roberto Perez. And he began his career in 1961. But we heard the B-side of his release on Cameo from February 66. A cover of the Tony Allen 1955 to Night Owl. And a great rendition it was. But this was the intended A-side. And also a great cover of A Little Anthony and the Imperials 1958 classic we go to February 66. Mr. Bobby Paris on Cameo. Give a listen to his rendition of the tune, Tears on My Pillow. <laughs> Cover tunes here on the all 60s edition of the Vinyl Treasure Show. That's Mr. Bobby Paris, February 66 release on the Cameo record banner there. His rendition of the uh, Little Anthony Imperials song, Tears on My Pillow. Now, uh, Bobby recorded uh, into the early 1970s. Unfortunately, he passed away September 24, 2009. was 69 years old, with a, uh, lost a battle with leukemia. But we remember two cool sides on that 45. I bought it from Louis Silvani at a cheap, cheap price. You see, that wasn't really vocal group harmony but at least the songs they were but anyway Johnny G here for a Saturday evening I'm back from my illness and uh, hopefully I'll be 100% by Tuesday when I head back to work but let's give a listen to some other cool 45s here's another uh, 45 from last month as I played a tune by Freddie Faulkner on Swan Records it was called Little Driftin' Amy now uh, that was the intended B side we're going to flip it over give a listen to the A side now Freddie was previously a member of a group 
group known as the Illusions. They were out of Philadelphia, PA, and uh, you may know their tune on the Mally label called Hey Boy. And uh, here is a solo release by Freddie Faulkner with a group backing him up. They're called the Rockaways. And this one arranged by Walter Gates. We go to February 1963, a few records from 63 on Swan Records. Freddie Faulkner, this is the A-side. It's called Cigarettes and Matches. Cigarettes and matches Cigarettes and matches My girl and I had an awful fight We both were wrong, but we both were mad She said she'd leave and I said, all right She walked away and forgot I had her Cigarettes and matches And the lipstick is her Cigarettes and and a lipstick case I walked for hours to the neighborhood That girl was all that was on my mind And just as I started feeling good That's just the time that my hands would find her Cigarettes and matches And a lipstick case Cigarettes and matches Never ever gonna love again And let a girl make a fool of me Cause it's a shame when you reach the end And all you got is a number and her cigarettes and matches And the lipstick case Cigarettes and matches And a lipstick case At first you think that she once was mine And now she pays every Joe and Jack Wish I could see her just a one more time Even if it's just to give her back her Cigarettes and matches And a lipstick facer Cigarettes and matches And a lipstick case Cigarettes and Cool tunes here on the 60s edition of the Vinyl Treasure Show. That's Cigarettes and Matches by Freddie Faulkner with a, a unnamed vocal group. They're called The Rockaways, February 1963. It's on the Swan label out of Philadelphia, PA. I could probably do a special on cigarettes. I don't know about matches, but there's a number of uh, songs that mention cigarette in the title. I know Lulu's... Uh, uh, what is that song that Lulu does on Atco? There's also one by the Free Movement that mentions I Put My Cigarette Down. There's a bunch of records that mention cigarette. It might not be in the title, but it might be in the lyrics. That'd be a cool show for sure. Jai G here for a Saturday evening as we continue here. And uh, many of you that tune into my 50 show will know this next artist. He was the lead singer of a number of R&B groups back in the 1950s. The Crickets recorded for JD Records. The Bachelor recorded for Earl in 57, the Monterey's on Onyx, but then he went on to a solo career, never really did have a big national hit, but a lot of great tunes during his career, and here's one from October 1963, we go to the Rust record label, and uh, remember when I tell you collectors, if you're looking through 45s and you see Sammy Lowe on the label, there's probably a 99% chance that the record is pretty decent, and Sammy, he arranged this 45, and uh, this one for Mr. Dean Barlow. We go to June of 63. Dean Barlow on Rust. The name of his tune is called Don't Let Him Take My Baby. <laughs>
Mr. Dean Barlow. Dean Barlow on the Rust label is my turntable. I'm playing around with that knob. I got, you know, when it gets humid out, that knob sticks more often. June 63 release, Mr. Dean Barlow there on the Rust label. Don't let him take my baby. And uh, yes, Warren, the, um, uh, Velvet's also recorded that one on the Monument record label, but uh, that's Mr. Dean Barlow. And uh, like I told you, Sammy Lowe, that's 99%. That's going to be a great record. Now, he recorded on other labels. Uh, JD in the 50s, also the Davis label, has stuff on Warwick. Leske, he's got two great records on the Leske label that uh, the Northern Soul of Belgium uh, pop singers are looking for. Also, TCF, UT, just to name a few. As we move on here on the Vinyl Treasure Show, got a girl group up next. As these gals, they're out of Hollywood, California. As we go to another Tower 45, I told you it was going through a box of Tower Records. And uh, this group, they're called the Starlets, not to be confused with the group out of Chicago that recorded for the Pam label or the group out of New York on the Astro label that Peggy Santiglia. Uh, she was the lead singer, of course, also the lead singer of the Angels, but they were called the Starlets prior. And uh, probably this trio is uh, uh, a trio of session singers performing uh, this Mike Curb song. This one arranged by H.B. Barnum. This one charted regionally number 28 on KNA. K-N-A-K out of Salt Lake City, Utah. We go to January 1965. Tower Records again. These are the Starlets with You Won't Ever Know Her Name.
January 65 release there for that girl group known as the Starlets, not the Scarlets, Linda. The Starlets there on the Tower label. The song is called "You Won't Even Know Her Name." Now, a uh, it was uh, what did I say here? As John G. loses by a few months later, uh, Mike Curb would record another version with a gal by the name of Josephine Sunday. It also came out on the Tower label. Actually, she performed that on the Dick Clark American Bands, and I know there was a clip. Uh, on uh, YouTube somewhere of her doing that, but uh, more of a specter type wall of sound on that uh, Josephine Sunday, although it did sound a little bit on that one. Gotta say hi to Doris Flanagan listening over in Australia. Thank you, Doris. I'm glad you enjoyed that Bobby Paris tune. As we continue here on the Vinyl Treader Show, let's stay with the girl group sounds, but we go to the UK for another cover song. It's a cover of a Jerry Goffin and Carol King tune, and uh, the first first final appearance, appearance of this song was in March of 1962. If you have the Shirelles LP, Baby, It's You. Then uh, late 62 LP by Chuck Jackson on his Any Day Now LP. He also recorded it. But the first 45 of this song came out in March of 63 on the Chairman label by a group called the Palisades, a.k.a. the Cookies. And Margaret Ross, she does the lead on that one. But this brings me to the next release which we go back to the rust label for this uk singer her name is janie marden m-a-r-d-e-n this one came out in january 64 janie marden on rust and her rendition of the tune make the night a little longer Cover tunes here on the Vinyl Treasure Show. Uh, Janie, Janie Marden's her name, January 64. That uh, uh, Carol King, Jerry Goffin tune, Make the Night a Little Longer, came out on the Rust record label. Others who recorded it were uh, Dionne Warwick. She recorded it on one of her Scepter LPs. Uh, and um, also the... Uh, someone, by, a group by the name of uh, they're called the Tangiers in 1970 they did it together with another song that went on Scepter and uh, there were also some unreleased tracks that came out on CDs by Tammy Terrell and Tommy Hump but that's a cool tune there make the night a little longer we can't make the night a little longer until we turn the clocks back then you gals can have the night a little longer so you're going to have to stay tuned to that day when it happens toward the 
<laughs> your time is just, see, I, not only did I lose my mind when I was ill, I, I lost other things too, like my sense of humor. Anyway, let's continue here on the Vinyl Treasure Show. Here's another B-side. And on last month's 60s show, I played the debut single for uh, the Ovations on the Gold Wax label. They're out of Memphis, Tennessee. And all they had 10 releases that came out on the Gold Wax label. I played Won't You Call. That was a co-written by the lead singer. His name is Lewis Williams. He also co-wrote the B-side. We go to November of 64 and give a listen to the Ovations on Gold Wax and the B-sides called Pretty Little Angel. Besides, here on the 60s edition of the Vinyl Treader Show, those are the ovations, November 1964, the B-side to their debut single on the Gold Wax label, Pretty Little Angel, very common title. I guess if you call that to title up, you'll get really a lot of a lot of songs with that say Pretty Little Angel for sure. But to Lewis Williams, he's the lead singer. He also sang lead uh, of... Uh, with the Del Rios on the Stax label. They do a wonderful song in June of 62 called Just Across the Street. That's his voice, Lewis Williams. Johnny G here for a Saturday evening. It's all 60s. Hope you're digging on these tunes. Let's continue now. This next singer, he's from West Philadelphia, PA, and in 1961 was the lead singer for the group called the Dovells on the Parkway record label. Now, his real name is Leonard Borisov, but we all know know him as uh, Len Barry of course in 1965 Len went solo had his biggest hit in 65 on Decca you know the tune one two three but uh, he recorded three on Amy Records here's the b-side to his second this one produced by Johnny Madera arranged by Joe Renzetti we go to September 1968 Amy Records with Mr. Len Barry and uh, his tunes called You're My Picasso Baby. <laughs> Yo 
the second of three on Amy Records for Mr. Len Barry their September 1968 release You're My Picasso Baby as I mentioned on the Amy label I don't know if Barbara my Barbara want me to compare her to Picasso a Picasso painting there do you ever see those paintings they're very hard to understand I mean maybe to the Mona Lisa you can compare your gal I don't know about Picasso. Anyway, John G. babbling on for a Saturday evening as we continue here. And uh, let's go back to Tower Records again. And this group out of the UK, they're called The Sinners. And they recorded uh, for UK Columbia. They had five releases on UK Columbia between November 63 and April 65. And only one of those uh, made it here to the U.S., on the tower label and their lead singer was a young teenage gal by the name of veronica lake but she changed her name to linda lane and uh, their fourth uk release became their only u.s release uh here on tower and maybe because on this one sounds to me a lot like lulu but you can be the judge we go to october 64 for linda lane with the Sinners, it's on Tower Records, and her tune's called Low Grades and High Fever.
Well, I think she sounds a little bit like Lulu, a little bit more shrieker on that one. But anyway, that's Linda Lane, a.k.a. Veronica Lake. That's her real name. Linda Lane with The Sinners, October 1964 release on the Tower label. Low Grades and High Fever is the name of the tune. I didn't have a high fever. I had like a low grade fever. Yes, I did for a few days here as Johnny G babbles on here. As we continue here on the 60s edition and not much known about this. No, that's the wrong one. Oh, yeah, no, that's correct on Epic Records here. Not much known about this next singer, although he had a dozen or so singles in all. Now, he was from uh, Clarksville, Tennessee, began his career with Snuff Garrett at Liberty Records back in 1961. Then, I think, another release on the United Artists label. And his next releases were on Epic, and this is the first of three on Epic. This one produced by uh, Billy Sherrill. And we go to February of 65 for Mr. Aubrey Wilson, Obrey Wilson on Epic, and uh, this I like this song. A song called "She Used to Be Mine." Don't ever be mean to her. No, no, no. No matter what you do, just be good to her. Yes, yes, yes. I know she'll be good to you. A girl like her the first of three for Mr. Aubrey Wilson, February 65, release on the epic label She Used to Be Mine is the name of the tune. Sounds a lot like Garnet Mims, a little bit like Cry Baby a little bit, or Kitty, Kitty Lester also, with that piano there. I like that tune there. It was unfortunate that uh, uh, we lost Aubrey Wilson. He passed away February 6, 2015 at the age of 73, but uh, it's got some cool records like that one. Jai G here for a Saturday evening. Hope you're digging on these 1960s 45s. Now, I can't tell you much about this next group, but I know a bit about the label. The label's called Barclay Records. It's out of, is it, let me see here, Orwigsburg, if I said that right. If anybody knows where Orwigsburg, Pennsylvania is, it's owned by Clay Barclay, who ran a local hometown record 
a producing engineer and publishing shop all in one operation where you can do it all and uh, he even ran WKBA a little 10 watt pirate radio station out of his parents house in Easter Pennsylvania so he really did it all and uh, this group they had two releases uh, on the Barclay label this one is their second they're called the traditions it's from 1967 the traditions on Barclay give a listen to their tune it's called my life without you the second of two for the traditions it's on the barclay label barclay records there 1967 my life without you is the name of the tune i guess that's all worth four bucks that i paid for that 45 a nice mid copy jig here for a a saturday evening let's continue here and featured a uh, this uh uh, one side, I think the A side of this next 45 on last month's 60s show was a duet by Carol and Jerry. And the A side was called How Can I Ever Find the Way? I also like the B side. I think it's pretty good. Produced by Gavin Bernstein for Don Costa Productions. We go to October 1966. The majority of these records that have sold for a lot of money have been on the uh, promo label. But I have this one on a black stock. It's got a BB hole in it, but I really don't care. No, I don't, but it's by Carol and Jerry, October 66, MGM. It's called On You, Heartache Looks Good.
We'll send that one out to Platterpus Jeff there in the top shelf. Holy Shami likes that tune by Carol and Jerry. It's a 45 in high demand uh, to those northern soul collectors. Mine's the stock copy. You usually see the MGM promo. You can buy the bootleg of that. I think, though, you can't get that side. They messed it up where you can't get that side for some reason. Going to have to tape it off of the Johnny G Vinyl Treader Show, although it's probably up on YouTube somewhere anyway. That's Carol and Jerry, October 1966, on You Heartache Looks Good. That's on MGM Records as we continue here for the 60s edition. Up next, a soul trio out of Chicago, Illinois, on Maurice Jackson more C label and uh, that label named after his four-year-old daughter back in 1966 now the group consisted of Oliver Locke Michael Hiller and Dennis Turner let's give a listen to the a side and uh, it's their second release on the more C record label and all the group members they get writer credits here we go to October of 66 for the three Jades the three Jades on more C the name of the tune is called show me your way. Yes, Warren got ooh, scratchy records. Yes, Warren got to agree with you. That's a definitely a terrific record. The Three Jades, October 1966. It's called Show Me the Way. It's on the Morsi label. Be careful out there, folks. This record was booted. Um, even in the condition an iPad, I bought this one a number of years ago by Barry Saltz. In that condition, I paid 50 bucks for the record. And how is Barry Saltz doing anyway? It's been a long time, Barry, that I haven't heard from you. So maybe I'm going to have to make a a trip to that Allentown PA show and show my face there. I haven't seen those guys in quite a while and I uh, haven't really been doing much buying of 45s. You know, Spence Wooten, when he passed away, he was really my main source for records, really, from a lot of the dealers. And uh, I really miss Spence. He, uh, very important with buying a lot of these 45s, both my 50s and a lot of these 60s that I get too. And I miss him. So I am open to another 
another guy to be my guy to get me some cool 45s. John G here for a Saturday evening as we continue. This next singer, he was born in Birmingham, Alabama, but then he moved to Detroit, began recording back in 64 for a label called Dottie's Records. He was little Roger Hatcher at that time, but he was the brother of Willie Hatcher, and he was the cousin to Charles Hatcher, a.k.a. You know who he is. His name is Edwin Starr of Stopper on Sight fame but he t but it took um <laughs> But it took four years till his next release from 64 to 1968 when he had this release on Ernie Young's Excello label. It's a song he wrote. We go to March of 68 for Roger Hatcher. Roger Hatcher on Excello. And the name of the tune is called No, That Is Not Correct. As Johnny G s screws up. That's the next record. This next tune. So let's go back. Let's go back. We stay with the soul groups for this next group that came out of Houston, Texas. Their first release was on the Copa label, but then it was picked up by Soundstage 7. They followed it with this second release on Soundstage 7, and this is the A-side. It features Jethro Caldwell on lead. This one charted regionally number 32 on WYOK out of Houston, Texas, as uh, this is the right record. We go to June of 66, Soundstage 7 for the Fantastics. It's called Have... A little faith. Sometimes your friends may deceive you, and your way seems dark as night. Just have faith in what you do. As June 66 there for the Fantastics. Jethro Caldwell, he's the lead singer. Have a little faith, the name of the tune. That's their second release. It's on Soundstage 7 Records. Now, another member of this group, uh, of this uh, Fantastics group, was Willie uh, Willie Purnell, and he would later join Archie Bell and the Drells, and also another member, Eddie Webb. He went to the Masters of Soul, and uh, this group, this fantastic group, also has a release on the Impresario label. I don't know if I've played that one here, but that's another good tune by the group. John G here on for a Saturday evening spinning these 1960s. Now let's go. I don't have to read all that information I gave you. Mention this Roger Hatcher tune. This one from March of 68. It's on Ernie Young's Excello label. Roger Hatcher. Like this song here. It's called Sweetest Girl in the World. And we never argue, we never, never 
March 68 release there. His name is Roger Hatcher. Roger Hatcher, he is the cousin to Edwin Starr, Charles Hatcher, and also the brother to Willie Hatcher. Ernie Young's Accelo Records for that one, Sweetest Girl in the World. Now, uh, he would have um, later singles followed in the early 70s. He's also on Volt and Black Soul, Columbia, Brown Dog, and another label called Super Bad. And uh, I remember paying 87 cents for that 45. Actually, it was a, it was like a... Uh, a one-time deal the guy said he had about 2045s and i whittled him down to 87 cents a record and a lot of good records in there the velvets on 20th century fox this one and a bunch of other cool records so i did make some deals to offset those big three thousand dollar 45s that johnny g purchased anyway as we continue here on the vinyl treasure show this next artist he was born in valdosta georgia had 16 charted billboard singles only on the Columbia label between 1965 and 1971. But initially, he began his career in 61 on the Fairlane label. His biggest hit was his first release on Columbia Records. You know the tune, Big Number 9 on Billboard, Number 6 on Cashbox. It was called Down in the Boondocks. But here's 45 just prior uh, to him signing with Columbia Records as we go to Tolly Records. And uh, this tune written by Joe South as this artist recorded a number of tunes written by Joe South. We go to May of 64 for Mr. Billy Joe Royal, Tolly Records, and his tune, it's called Mama Didn't Raise No Fools. May 64 there for Billy Joe Royal. Billy Joe Royal on the Tolly label. Mama didn't raise no fools. Now, VJ Records would re-release this song on the Players label. So if you can own this on the Players label and from 65, actually they released it when the Down in the Boondocks became a big hit for uh, Billy Joe Royal on Columbia. And uh, hopefully it would click again, but unfortunately it did not. But it's a cool tune. Now, Billy Joe would go on to be strictly country in 19. 
1985, but unfortunately he passed away in his sleep October 6, 2015 at the age of 73. But I really like a lot of his tunes. Really a great artist there, Mr. Billy Joe Royal. As we continue here on the Vinyl Treasure Show, let's stay with another singer-songwriter from Georgia, this time Columbus, Georgia, and Billy Joe Royal along with the Tams and Tommy Rowe and Guy Darrell and the Swing of Medallions and Bill Deal and the Rondells and others sang songs written by this next singer-songwriter. He signed with VJ Records back in 1961. He had five releases on VJ. This was his last. Of course, he wrote it. He wrote all the songs he did sing, I'm pretty sure, but originally recorded it in 63 based on the Matrix number on this uh, VJ release, but it wasn't issued until April of 64. I'm talking about Mr. Ray Whitley. This is his last release on VJ Records, a song called Walking Back to You. That's one you often don't hear by Mr. Ray Whitley. We'll send that one out to John Rouse, currently in the Top Shelf Holy Show. He likes that tune by Mr. Ray Whitley, his fifth release on VJ Records. That's his last release, Walking Back to You from April 1964. It's unfortunate that later in his life he struggled with alcoholism, eventually became homeless, and in 2011 he was living in a shelter in Gainesville, Georgia, where he eventually passed away May 5, 2013 at the age of 69, a downfall for a great writer and singer, Mr. Ray Whitley. As we continue here on the Vine Treasure Show. This next singer, he's from Philadelphia, PA. He was the bass player for Dickie Doo and the Don'ts, but he embarked on a a uh, solo singing career in 1963 with his first release that came out on Warner Brothers Records. Then he signed with VJ Records, and uh, this was his second release. And uh, actually, uh, this was his second of two that came out on the Tali label. Now, this tune was written by Phil Spector and Terry Phillips, but originally this was written for Mr. Gene Pitney, and it debuted only on an LP, a 1962 Gene Pitney LP, if you have uh, the, uh, the LP called The Many Sides of Gene Pitney. You'll find this song on that album from 62. It was never on a 45 by Mr. Pitney, but it's an excellent side. You got to 
check the side out by him it features the halos and in the backing track i know warren you'll like that tune but here is a a cover version of the song as done by mr joey page i like this version also from november 64 joey page the first of two on tolly with his rendition of the tune dream for sale she told me there was no one else like the rumors say but i saw her in the show with him just the other day how could she do it where did i fail I can't keep myself from crying when I think that I have loved the girl that every other word was just a lie. How could she do it? Where did I fail? Hey, anybody want a dream? I got a dream for sale. A dream. Cover tunes here on the 60s edition of the Vinyl Treaders show. Joey Page. Joey Page doing the Gene Pitney tune, Dream for Sale, November 64. First of two on the Tolly record label. He would have another one that came out on VJ Records and later 60s releases on the Mira label and the Phillips label. John G here spinning all 1960s. Hope you're digging these tunes. I rarely get to hear my 60s records, but I get to... I go to listen to them all the way through when I'm here on a Saturday evening, the last Saturday of every month. And for this one, I used to play this one a lot when I started collecting and I was a teenager because I like this next tune, but I haven't heard this one in quite a while. I saw this black vinyl stock pressing in the box and uh, had some grime on it, but I cleaned it up really nice, came out really nice, and you know this gal. She was born in Brooklyn, New York, but she was raised in Tenafly, New Jersey. Her real name is Leslie Sue Goldstein. Lots of hits she had on the Mercury label, produced by Quincy Jones, arranged by Klaus Ogerman. This song written by Ellie Greenwich and Jeff Barry, it's one of my favorites. This one made it up to number 27 on Billboard, number 20 on Cashbox. I know Lee Michael Dempsey also likes uh, this gal, so we'll send this one out to him. We go to December 1964, Miss Leslie Gore on Mercury, and uh, her cool tune, it's called Look of Love. <laughs> Look out loud. 
Always great to hear that tune by Miss Leslie Gore. December 1964, The Look of Love is the name of the tune. It's on the Mercury record label. If you want that record, you want it on the hard vinyl press on the black label. It's got a BB hole in it. Like I tell you, I really don't care. But it mentions on the 45, it's from the Mercury LP, Girl Talk. And I was really shocked when I heard that uh, she died on uh, February 16th, 2015, at the age of 68 from lung a cancer. I really, no one knew that uh, she was ill. I had uh, when I was listening to a uh, '60s on six. Uh, in the morning, they had all, all these artists calling in, and uh, Lou Christie, a bunch of them that, that she used to sing with at these shows, they didn't even know that uh, she was ill, but uh, anyway, I like Leslie Gore, I really do like a lot of her tunes. Jai G here for a Saturday evening, it's all 1960s 45s, here's another B-side from the last 60s show, I played it, uh, it was on the World Artist label by an artist, goes by the name of Tommy Regan, it was called I Adore You, it was a cover of the Angels release on Smash, I Adore Him. Uh, and uh, I also like the B-side, and it's another Artie Cornfell pen song. And the interesting thing about this 45, I really didn't know it until I flipped it over and looked on the label. I have this promo copy, and it says that this, uh, the previous owner of this record, he, st- he has a stamper on it. It's Cadet John Towbridge from Company D, Augusta Military Academy, F- Fort Defiance, Virginia. And uh, how appropriate as we are in the Memorial Week, and we want to remember all the brave servicemen who died while serving this country's country in the armed forces. So let's go back to March of 1965. We give a listen to this record that originally belong to cadet john throwbridge i wonder if you're out there i have your 45 it's by tommy regan on world artist it's a b-side it's called nine to five Mr. Tommy Regan with a B-side there. March 65, Tommy Regan on World Artist 9 to 5 is the name of the tune. And uh, same Tommy Regan that uh, had a cool doo-wop release on Colpix Records from 64. I'll never, never stop loving you is the name of that one. Anyway, John G here for a Saturday evening as uh, hopefully not fading yet, although I am getting tired. Lots of uh, 45s on the Tolly label uh, tonight and also on the Tower label. I was in a T-Box. 
box, as you can see. But here's another one on Tolly. This next song, a request, though, for Charlene Whiteside of Huntsville, Texas. Of course, Charlene helps me so much, so much a part of a Johnny G's Vinyl Treader Show. Really want to thank her for all her help. Really helped me quite a bit today. And actually, every Saturday, all dur during the week, Charlene helps Johnny G. And uh, she wanted to hear this group out of Chicago. The first of two they recorded on Tolly Records. It's a cover song. It was first done by the Dreamers on the Fairmount label back in 1963. A tune written by Sharon Sheely and Jackie DeShannon. Now, the lead singer, his name is David Raskin, and uh, he's singing as Cal David. And this group is called Cal David and the Exceptions. So, by request for Charlene Whiteside, we go to March of 64 on the Tolly label, Cal David and the Exceptions, and uh, their rendition of the tune Daydreaming of You. <laughs> Say hello. He said you got a lot of nerve. You stuck up so and so. You passed me right by on the corner yesterday. When I said hello, you just went on your merry way. Oh, the trouble I get into. Daydreaming of you. Now half the time I don't know what I'm doing. And if I don't. That's the first of two on Tolly Records for Cal, K-A-L, Cal David and the Exceptions, March 64 release, Daydreaming of You. It's a cover song originally recorded by the Dreamers in 63 on the Fairmount record label. Now, Cal David, he would leave the Exceptions to form a group called the Raven Kind, and they had a 1965 release on the Illinois Speed Press label as Johnny G continues here and this next group they're from Long Island New York they're an offshoot of a group called the Expressions there's a lot of groups called the Expressions but this Expressions group they recorded for Parkway Records in 1963 and when that group broke up the members Bobby Bloom and John Governal they formed a new group and they were called the Trains and they put out two releases on the Swan label this is their first written by Pete Antel and John Lind, it features Bobby Bloom on lead. Linda, don't you like Bobby Bloom 45s? Well, he's doing lead on this one from November 1964. These are the trains on Swan, and their tunes called The Plan, parentheses, I Love You So.
November 64 release there. They're called The Trains. Uh, Bobby Bloom, he's the lead singer. The name of the tune is called The Plan. The Plan, parentheses, I Love You So. That one there on the Swan record label. That's a cool tune as we move on here. On a Saturday evening, uh, Johnny G spinning 1960s, 45s out of my collection. We do it the last Saturday of every month. And here's a singer from Brooklyn, New York. His real name is Warren Schatz. He recorded as Richie Dean. Been playing a lot of 45s on the Tower label tonight. And Richie had four releases on the Tower label. This is his fourth and a song he previously recorded and released on Canadian American Records back in October of 1964 as The Whispers. But he decided to re-record the tune under his alias, Richie Dean. Let's go back to April 1966. This is the re-recorded version by Richie Dean, his last release on Tower. The name of the tune is called It's Rainin', It's Pourin'. It's raining, it's pouring, teardrops are falling from the sky into my eyes, because you're gone. It's the fourth and final release for Richie Dean on Tower Records. Warren Schatz, that's his real name. April 66 release for It's Raining, It's Pouring. And originally he recorded that with the, the Whispers in October 1964 on Canadian American. He resung version there from April 1966. Warren Schatz, a.k.a. Richie Dean, also recorded as the Petrified Forest on Fontana, the Warmest Spring on Parkway, and also the Whispers on the Lori label and also on the Canadian American label. As we move on here on the Vinyl Treasures Show, this next singer is from Burlington, Vermont, and he goes by the name of Stephen. Sergeant Blodgett. <laughs> he was he was backed up by a group of New York session mu- musicians, but when Compass Records decided to release this 45, their owner, Mickey Cap, he wanted to have a catchy group name. So he decided to drop Steven's last name, good idea, <laughs> and called uh and and ended up so they dropped Steven Sergeant Blod. Blodgett and, and called him Steven Sargent and then they, he made up this uh, group name for the musicians called them The Pride hence the name Steven Sargent and The Pride now the song written by Paul Lecca and Bob Reno we go to January 1967 it's on Compass Records Steven Sargent and The Pride the tune is called Nobody's Child.
January 1967 there, Stephen Sargent and the Pride. It's on the Compass label, Compass 7001. I think there's a 7,000 I have. Anyway, that's Nobody's Child. Well, Johnny G's Nobody's Child tonight, spinning 1960s original vinyl 45s out of my collection. Now, Charlene found out that this next group was speculated to be from Birmingham, Ireland. They first recorded as the Strangers. Strangers, a a very well-known Ireland group. Now, this ends up, how this ends up on ATCO Records, we'll never know. But the writers, Tony Dalloway and Jack Elock, were members of this Irish group. Now, here's the plug side of this ATCO 45. We go to February 1965. They're called the Martells, M-A-R-T-E-L-L-S. It's on ATCO Records. This is the A side. It's called What Can I Do? My little baby, she's gone away Why she went, she didn't say Without her love, I feel no good What can I do, what can I do February 65 release there. They're called the Martells. It's on the Atco record label. What Can I Do is the name of the is name of the tune there. Now, Jake Ellick, he would go on to join Finders Keepers, if you know that group. Anyway, John G here for a Saturday evening. Hope you're digging on these tunes here. It's all 1960s as okay, Johnny G plows on. Yes, I do. And this next group, they formed uh, at Campbell County High School in Kentucky. They were known as the Savoys. They had a release on the Test label. Then they changed their name to the New Lime with their initial release that came out on Fraternity Records. Then they do another one on the Boss label. Then they sign with a local Cincinnati DJ uh, Shad O'Shea's counterpoint label and put out seven releases on that label here is their third it was written by the drummer of the group his name is is mickey foliger and it features gary lee Fawes on lead we go back to july of 1967 this is on counterpart records they're called the new lime the tune is called the perfect girl It wasn't long 
long ago When I finally said I know I met the one and only girl for me Her hazel eyes would shine And when her eyes met mine I'd known I'd met the perfect girl for me Built my world around her So happy that I found her And happier that I was the one she loved And every night it seemed I'd see her in my dreams I'd wake and pray and thank the Lord above That's a cool, eerie organ in that uh, in that song there by the New Lime, July 1967. Counterpart Records, it's called The Perfect Girl. John G. not playing perfect 45s. I wish I had everyone in mint condition. Unfortunately, I do not, but I try my best. Yes, I do. Let's go to another B-side from the last 60s edition. I played the second of two on the date label for this group known as The Exiles. And the song I played was called, the A-side was called, I'd Love to Give My Love Away. Yes, I do. So let's give a spin to the B-side before I file it back down in the no-humidity basement. This side has both sides of the record uh, arranged by the late Jimmy Wisner. It features Jimmy Stokely on lead. We go to April 1968. Date records. These are the exiles with Come Out, Come Out, Whoever You Are.
B-Sides here on the Vinyl Treader Show. Those are the Exiles. April 68 release, the uh, second of two on the date label. Come out, come out, wherever you are. Jimmy Stokely on lead there. Jimmy Wisner uh, range the 45 as we move on here on Vinyl Treasures. And we continue with more B-Sides, but uh, here is a, uh, a group that formed in Newcastle, England, was part of the British invasion in the uh, 1960s. You know their biggest hit on the MGM label, The House on the Rising Sun. But here is a B-Side uh, that uh, my aunt would play as a uh, the hit side was called San Franciscan Nights. It was uh, number nine on Billboard, number eight on Cashbox. But we're going to flip that 45 over because my aunt liked the B side. Uh, and, uh, of course, I'm talking about Eric Burden and the Animals. And uh, this one from July 67, Eric Burden and the Animals, the flip side of San Franciscan Nights. It's on MGM. It's called Good Time. sides here on the 60s edition that's the flip side of san franciscan nights by uh, eric burden and the animals good times the name of the tune it's on the mgm label released july 1967 let's continue here on our last 60s show i opened up with the outsiders out of cleveland ohio their third of nine for capitol records a cover i really like by them a song called respectable of the cover of the isley brothers tune so let's give a spin to the flip side as it sounds so much like their biggest hit uh, that you all know i think randy has a special name for this song i think he calls it time won't let me part two but i like it features sonny geraci on lead we go to july of 66 these are the outsiders on capital and the b-side it's called lost 
in my world. So the Outsiders, the Outsiders sounding a lot like Time Won't Let Me, their big hit, but that's called, uh, called Lost in My World, July 1966. That's the flip side of their third release on Capitol, Sonny Geraceon lead as we continue here on the Vinyl Treader Show. For this next group out of New York City, the group members included Joey Fortenza, Mike Leva and the lead singer Bobby Hocker and he wrote the tune it's on the Mona Lee label a subsidiary of Amy Malabelle and uh, it's from April of 68 they're called the epitome thank you Dave the Rave the epitome on Mona Lee Records and their tune it's called Flower Power <laughs>
That's from April 68, the group called The Epitome. It's on the Mona Lee label. It's called Flower Power. No, not with F-L-O-U-R. Flower Power would be for the bakery. No, this is the this is the other Flower Power. They would have a second release on the Kama Sutra label in 1969 as we continue here on the Vinyl Treasure Show. And uh, it's almost 12, not 12 yet. One more minute to go. Anyway, on, la- on the last 60s show, I played a 45 by a group known as the Free For All. It was called Show Me The Way, came out on the Challenge label. A group They were a group out of Canada. Now, prior to uh, uh, that release, though, they were known as the Great Scots, and they recorded two on the Epic label, and this is their first, which features Rick McNeil on lead, and it's from July of 1965, and they're called the Great Scots. Scots. It's on Epic Records, and we're going to send this. Although well, the song isn't, <laughs> it's not what Johnny G wants. That is for sure. But we're going to send this one out to Lady Linda, Linda Gata, and it is her birthday today. Their birthday on the 27th of May. Happy birthday, Linda. I would sing for you. I will sing for you after this record. So we'll send this one out to Linda. It's from July 65. It's the Great Scots on Epic. It's called Don't Want your love. of the great scots july 1965 it's on the epic record label uh, that is their first on Epic. Rick McNeil, he's the lead singer. Don't Want Your Love is the name of that one. They would have two more in 1966 on the Triumph record label. That wasn't really, although that was a cool sound, I'd say. But uh, we'll send this next one out to Linda Gata, too, for her birthday today. And this singer, he's uh, born in Germany, but he moved to Hampshire, England. His real name is Heinz Henry George Schwartz, but he recorded only under his first name, Heinz. He was discovered while working in a grocery store by Joe Meek, and he recorded four, as we go back to Tower Records, four on Tower. This was his first. We'll send this one out to the birthday girl, Linda Gata, September 64 for Heinz on Tower. It's called Questions I Can't Answer. <laughs> When 
she hurt me And laughing too Do I still love her? Now I wish I knew These are questions Questions I can't answer Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh Do I still love her? Oh, is she lied to me? Can we still be Like we used to be? These are questions Questions I can't answer Uh-huh September 64 release there for Heinz. You know, it was reminding me of Heinz ketchup, although I like Del Monte ketchup. I use Del Monte ketchup on my turkey burgers tonight for dinner. But uh, that's Heinz, his fourth release on the Tower label, Questions I Can't Answer is the name of the tune. Now, prior to these solo recordings, he was a member of the Tornadoes on the London label, and you know their big instrumental hit, Telstar. Unfortunate that uh, he passed away April 7th of 2000 at the age of 57 from a stroke but we remember him here on the vinyl treasure show <laughs> let's continue here we are now in vinyl treasure overtime and on the last 60s show i featured this singer from jacksonville florida his debut single came out on the heidi label it was called how long will it last and he earned that recording on Heidi Records because he won the Apollo Theater Amateur Night Contest in 1964. I think he won it like for four consecutive weeks and that warranted a contract with Heidi Records. So let's give a spin to the B side of that 45. It's arranged and conducted by Burt Keys. The first of two for Mr. Joe Anderson. Joe Anderson, it's on from April 65 on Heidi. It's called So Glad.
B-Sides here on the Vinyl Treasure Show. That's Joe Anderson is the B-Side to his debut single on Heidi Records. So glad from April 1965, the first of two on the Heidi label. We are in Vinyl Treasure Overtime here with the 60s edition. And got a girl group from Philadelphia, PA. And uh, these uh, gals, I think, plus maybe a cousin or two, were the daughters, or two of the members, were daughters of Little Joe Cook of Peanuts fame. Little Joe Cook and the Thrillers had a big hit in 57 with Peanuts. But um, his daughters recorded uh, had... uh, you know, Slop Time and Pop Pop, what was that, Pop Pop Pie on the Guiden record label in the early 1960s. And uh, but prior to that, they were known as the um, the Dellos, D-E-L-O-E-S. Uh, they did a single on the Cedar label, Lullaby Serenade in 62. But here's a late one by them from 1965. The uh, song uh, co-written by their uh, father, Joe Cook, and uh, one of the gals, I don't know if it was... Dinell or Delphine, but the one of the D's get writer credits. It's a, it's a good soulful ballad here. So we just heard So Glad. How about a tune called So Good? We go to the Vim record label. Vim stands for Variety in Music. This is from 65. They're called the Sherry's. It's called So Good. That's a cool, soulful ballad there by the Sherry's. The Sherry's 1965. It's on the Vim record label. So good is the name of the tune. I'm going to ask Barbara to dance slow with me tomorrow when she comes over. She's coming over to visit her her ailing, no, not ailing, getting better boyfriend. And maybe we'll dance slow to that record up here in the No Static Attic. Oh, no, that's in Dave the Raves, Relics and Rarities. Anyway, John G here doing Vinyl Treasure Overtime. Let's continue here. I was only able to, I was running so far behind, I was only able to post one record on my Facebook page, and this was the record that I posted, this next one, for this group that formed back in 1966 at Luke Air Force Base in Arizona. They had three releases, 
on only three overall releases, uh, one on Chartmaker in 1966, another on the Win Hit label, and finally, this 45 that I'm featuring on the Pathway, P-A-T-H-E-W-A-Y, Pathway label, co-written by the lead singer. His name is James Mitchell. As we all get up on the dance floor to dance to this one from November of 67, they're called The Servicemen. How appropriate, The Servicemen. Just good for Memorial Day day for two the servicemen on pathway the name of the tune is called i need a helping hand Randy, I have to agree with you. It does sound a little bit like the duck. Anyway, those are the servicemen, November 1967. Pathway Records, I need a helping hand. I did need a helping hand last Friday. I was in no condition to come up and do the show. Got to thank Hi-Fi Tim for uh, broadcasting that uh, show, that uh, that old show from 2008. As we continue here on Vinyl Treasure Overtime, next, the next 245s are duets. Up first, we have a duet that goes by the name of Valerie and Nick. And I know you maybe some of you know who that is. They are singer-songwriters Valerie Simpson and Nick Ashford. It's a song they wrote. It's the first of three they recorded on Henry Glover's Glover label, of course, distributed by Mr. Morris Levy of Roulette. He uh, had uh, probably some influence with them, helping them with this. But anyway, it's from March of 64, Valerie and Nick on Glover. It's called I'll Find You.
cool tune there by Valerie and Nick and uh, Valerie Simpson, Nick Ashford, they wrote that tune called I'll Find You, March 1964, it's on the Glover record label, we continue with a twin spin, but not by them, by another duet, and uh, this duet, it's a hit again, I played a couple of hits tonight or maybe more than a couple, no, a couple of hits I think, and uh, this was a big hit, this record was number 17 on Billboard, number 14 on Cashbox, as by Jean and Debbie spelled D-E-B-B-E I wonder if she did spell it D-E-B-B-I-E, I have to check some of those other releases they have on TRX, but they are Jean Thomas and Debbie Nevels, and a 45 I have fond memories of of listening to because my aunt purchased the 45 in the fall of 1967 produced by Don Gant and uh, Troy Caldwell writ, uh, written by one half of the duo of course it being Gene Thomas this one from November of 67 give a listen to Gene and Debbie on TRX with their big hit it's called Playboy <laughs>
Wow, sounds good to hear that record. Haven't heard that one in a long, long time. Gene and Debbie, November 1967. Gene Thomas, Debbie Neville's Playboy, their big hit on the TRX record label. They have other cool records on the TRX label. Come Go, wait. What was that called, Charlene? Come Go With Me? I think that's the name of it. Originally on the Sand label, by the way, but also on TRX. Anyway, John G. babbling on here on Vinyl Treasure Overtime. And this next female singer-songwriter, she's from Chicago. And uh, you know her. Her name is Minnie Ripperton. Now, her on her debut single, though, she didn't record as Minnie Ripperton. She recorded as Andrea Davis. And this 45 came out on the chest label she co-wrote it together with sugar pie de santo we go to october 1966 this is the debut single for minnie ripperton under the name andrea davis actually this is the b-side uh of the record but i like better chess records the name of the tune is called you gave me soul <laughs> Besides here on the Vinyl Treasure 60s Overtime Edition, that is Andrea Davis, a.k.a. Minnie Ripperton. That's her debut single, actually the B-side, October 1966. You gave me soul. Yes, you did. On the Chess record label. Now, when the promos were going out of the flip side, I think it's called Lonely Girl, they left it blank so the DJs couldn't play that side. But uh, I don't know. I, I mean, there's a couple that posted up on, uh, I don't know if it's 45 Cat or whatever, but they're one-sided DJs, and you couldn't hear that side. But anyway, uh, after this release, she joined the Rotary Connection before she embarked on a solo career. Now, you know her biggest hit, 45, I purchased, I will say. I did purchase in 1974 on Epic. You know what the tune is? It's called Loving You. But it's unfortunate that she passed away July 12, 1979. She was only 
31 years old. She passed away from breast cancer, but uh, she was uh, uh, she really was a, a spokesperson for um, breast cancer. Uh, she raised money, a lot of money, but unfortunately it was her demise, but left us with some great tunes. As we continue here on The Vinyl Treasure, I was contemplating playing this next song because it's supposed to be the start of summer with this Memorial Day weekend, although this record mentions snow or what you do in the snow, but it's still a great tune, so that's why I'm playing it. As this group there from Brooklyn, New York, they had three releases on the Dynavoice label. This is their third, written by Sandy Linzer and Denny Randell, and uh, was arranged and conducted by Charlie Colello. It's a pretty expensive 45, not easy to find. I have a nice vinyl press of it. It features Billy Morris on lead. We go to December of 65. That's when this came out it's not really a summer tune but if you're hot uh, what did kelly say it was 20 degrees somewhere i don't know but if you're hot you're gonna get cooled off by this song uh it's from december 65 on dyna voice they're called the invitations and it's called skiing in the snow December 65 release there. They're called The Invitations. Invitations on Dyna Voice. Uh, Billy Morris, he's on lead. A Charlie Colello uh, produced record there. Uh, it features, the song is called Skiing in the Snow. And we got to ask Alex Galbraith if it's, it's his birthday today. He shares a birthday with Linda Gaeta. Happy birthday, Alex. Is How cold is it up in Canada, though it hasn't turned uh, the 27th yet? So we'll send that cool record out to Alex for his birthday. Happy birthday, Alex. You are 10 years older than Johnny G because I will be reaching that milestone this September that you're reaching that milestone. I don't want to say your age over the year. But anyway, as we continue here in Vinyl Treasure Overtime, now the last time I played this next 45 was when I was, I did a guest spot 
on Dave the Rave's Relics and Rarity Show. I went down to Freehold, New Jersey, and uh, Dave set it up with a microphone. I brought down a whole box of 45s. Of course, he had to preview them all, and he did. And this was one that he picked. It was August of 2005. And then, uh, you know, we were up till I think like 4 or 5 a.m. playing records that night. And of course, I think by the time we finished, uh, I, I think it, I, we slept. I don't know if I think we ever slept because I started looking through his boxes of records. But I went down there and I brought this 45 amongst others, and I played this on his show. This female that uh, started singing in her father's church in Aslan, Kentucky, and uh, was later discovered singing in a bar by producer Paul Vance, and she did her first. Uh, release as Gail Kelly on the Capitol label in 1966. Her real name is Nancy Gail Shivel, but uh, then she recorded two on the Capitol label as Bunny Shivel. This is her second, and this one uh, uh, written by Ray Pennington, and this one from October of 66. Bunny Chevelle's her name. It's on Capitol. The name of the tune is called You'll Never Find a Love Like Mine. October 66, released there on the Capitol Record banner, Bunny Chevelle. Bunny Chevelle there and her tune call, You'll Never Find a Love Like Mine. As we continue here in Vinyl Treasure Overtime, now earlier we heard from Roger Hatcher, and I mentioned that Roger Hatcher was also cousin to Charles Hatcher, a.k.a. Mr. Edwin Starr. On, on the last 60s edition, I played uh, uh, his uh, 45 on Rick Tick, his third release on Rick Tick called Stopper on Sight SOS. Well, the B-side isn't that shabby either. We go to January 1966 from Mr. Edwin Starr. It's on Rick Tick. We flip over Stopper on Sight. You get this cool tune. It's called I Have Faith in You. Walked away 
So you got to play your B-sides, folks. That's Mr. Edwin Starr. That's the flip side of Stopper on Site SOS. January 66 releases third on Rick Tick. I have faith in you. Yes, I do. As we move on here on Vinyl Treasure Overtime, let's flip, flip over another uh, 45 from the last 60 show. Actually, a request uh, for Bopper Boy. He's left a while ago, but uh, he wanted to hear the B-side of this 45 I featured for him by Doc and the Interns on uh, Art LeBeau's now label, a song entitled We Can Work It Out. But this was the intended A-side written by the lead singer. His name is Doc Price Jr. We go to February 65 for Doc and the Interns. It's on the Now label. This is the A-side. It's called Baby I Know. February 65, that is the A side of the 45 by Doc and the Interns on the Now label. Uh, that is Art LeBeau's Now label, by the way. Baby I Know is the name of the tune. Got three more 45s to go before Johnny G signs off here on the Vinyl Treader Show. Here's a 45 I purchased from the record library of KCLH, a station out of Colorado Springs in Denver, Colorado. Now, the group is from the UK, and they got their name from performing at the Adlib Club in London, England. Now, the song was written by Dan Penn and Rick Hall, and it's actually a cover song. This was originally recorded by Jimmy Hughes in September 64. Let's give a listen to this one from April of 65. These are the ad libs, the ad libs from the UK, not the ad libs boy from New York City. No, a different group. And it features Mike Ward on lead. We go to the Interfon, Interfon Records, and the song is called Lovely Ladies. <laughs> That is my 
Cover tunes here on the Vinyl Dreaders Show. Those are the ad libs. April 1965, Interfon Records. You know, they had a big hit with Have I the Right by the Honeycombs. That's not a hit, though. The ad libs with Lovely Ladies. Two more 45s to go before Johnny G uh, signs off here. Here's a girl group. Uh, not much available about this group, but it's on the Nashville based hickory label it appears to be the group's only release as we go to april of 64 give a listen to the zippers the zippers on hickory and their tune called my sailor boy
Got to say hi to Santi from Miami. Thank you for tuning in to the Vinyl Treader. Show your kind words about the 60s edition. Much appreciated. Enjoy bringing you the 60s records on the last Saturday of every month. That one there, April 1964. They're called The Zippers. It's on Hickory Records out of Nashville, Tennessee. It's called My Sailor Boy. Well, that's going to do it for Johnny G and the Vinyl Treader Show. Glad you joined Johnny G for the last two hours listening to cool 60s 45s out of my collection. You want to get in touch with Johnny G, send me an email at vinyl treasures at aol.com been recording this one on Ustream broadcaster going to save this and post it up on my youtube archive so those of you that are collectors of this music and enjoy looking at the cool labels of these 1960s 45s you can also go to my website vinyl treasures.net you can stream or download the shows anytime any day of the week and uh, have a lot of fun i always have a lot of fun uh doing this show and i'm glad to be back i had a rough time i did last weekend and uh, gonna be on medication till august and hopefully to get this uh, all cleared up and then johnny g will be back a hundred percent but to thank you all for your kind words and we're gonna close the show tonight uh with a group from new york city they're called the townsmen uh, their first release was in 63 on the herald label a song called is it all over yes it is but here's their second on columbia it features ernest stevens on lead he also co-wrote the tune the, the closers from january 65 we go to columbia records the townsman with gotta get moving and that is the truth that's going to do it folks glad you enjoyed i hope you enjoyed the tunes tonight um sounds like you did but to tune in tomorrow evening starting at 9 p.m for my buddy dave the raven his relics and rarity show he'll be on tomorrow as we continue with the memorial day weekend as we remember our our uh soldiers that fought for our freedom here in the united states so don't forget that i'll be back next saturday starting at 10 p.m 10 to midnight for the 50s and early 60s edition so uh, please tune in next saturday night i'll be here thank you charlene for all your help and to all the listeners have a great weekend and have a great week i'll see you here next saturday just want to say everybody so long I'm getting tired of seeing the same old thing now. Oh, 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 my story I got